So in our last video clip, we calculated the uh, centroids for some simple shapes, and then we ended up with the formulas that we see here for the more complex shapes. And we will use these formulas to go through a, an example calculation. So let's consider this complex shape, which is really a square with the, the corner cut off. So we divide this shape into some shapes that we know uh, that we are confident that we can calculate the centroid for. So it has three different shapes. We have shape one, which is a rectangle, shape two, which is a triangle, and shape three, which is a square. And we know from our last uh, clip, video clip, the formulas on how to calculate those. And this slide is just simply a real quick review on the area formulas for basic shapes that we know. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I know you guys know this. So in the next few slides, we're going to break down all the individual components of the, the nasty looking formulas on the first slide. So the first step we want to do is we want to calculate the areas of each of the individual shapes. So for shape one, we know it's the width times the height, and we get 18 square inches. For the triangle, we get four and a half square inches. And then finally for the square, we get nine square inches. Next, we want to look at what the centroid locations are for each of the simple shapes that we've determined. So for one, we know that there has some symmetry and it's right in the middle of the rectangle. And for shape two, we know the formula one third B and one third H. And for the square, we know that it's right in the middle. Next, what we wanna do is determine the X and Y coordinates for those centroids, for those marks that we just placed on our diagram. So first let's look at the X coordinates and we're going to just shape by shape. So for shape one, we know that the X coordinate is one and a half. For two, after we did our uh, one third H, we found that when we add uh, one inch to the three inches, it's actually four inches over from our y-axis. That's how we get four. We add three plus the one-third uh, base. And the one-third base in this case is one. So one plus the three is how we get four. And using a similar process, we find that x for the square is 4.5. So using that same process for y, we get three inches for the first shape four inches for the triangle, and 1.5 inches for the square. So remembering our formula, let's, let's look at the numerator, the top of that formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a table that looks like this. And we're going to create a line for each shape. And our table is going to have the headings of area and the x-coordinate and then the product of those. 
So our area for shape one was 18 square inches. Our x coordinate was 1.5 inches. We, when we multiply those, we get 27 inches cubed. Following that same process then, we get 18 inches cubed for the triangle, and for the square, we get 40.5. Now that is just for the x component. Doing the same thing for the y components then, we get for shape one, 54 inches cubed. That's the product of 18 times three. The product of four and a half times four for the triangle is 18 inches cubed. And then finally for the square, we get nine times one and a half is 13.5 inches cubed. So now we've calculated the numerator for the x and the y formula. But we're not quite done yet. What we need to do to finish getting the number for our numerator is add all those together. Remember what the uh, the Greek letter sigma means, it means to add all of those components. So when we do that for x, and we want to stay, uh, we want to keep the x's together, and we want to keep all the y's together. So when we add 27 plus 18 plus 40 and a half, we get 85.5 cubic inches. And when we add everything for y, we get 85.5 also, uh, also cubic inches. Now that we have our numerator, let's work on the denominator. And we've actually calculated everything that we need to do here. All we need to do is the summation part. So when we do that, all we do is we add the areas of all the individual shapes. Again, which we've already calculated. So we have 18 plus 4.5 plus 9 is 31.5 square inches. So now we have everything we need to calculate x bar and y bar for our complex shape. So let's do that. So x bar is 85.5 cubic inches divided by 31 and a half square inches. And when we do the math, the number part is 2.71 and our units, uh, the square inches cancel two of the inches on top and we're left with 2.71 inches. But the same thing for y, we get 2.71 inches, and you can see that depicted graphically. Does this have any lines of symmetry? If you think about it for a second, it actually does. And that goes right through our centroid. Just what we were looking for.